Oh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Mike here with me. And tonight we're going to start Proverbs 13, Part 1. But before we start, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful time to be in the Word, Lord. And we just pray that you just, this is your Word, to take over. Guide us and direct us, uh, anoint this word, bless all that are here tonight and those that will watch in the future, and uh, just give us a wonderful, blessed time in the word this evening. And we just give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, this Proverbs 13, verse 1. And it says, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Amen. And I think we were talking about this earlier, about the chastening of the Lord and, and how scoffers and the wicked do not want to, you know, we can't, we can't re, uh, give them instruction on how they will, you know, hate you for it. They um, don't want to hear it. They just believe they're wise in their own eyes. And, um, you know, we can see this. We can see this in the word that uh, this is probably a few times we've had this about scoffers and eating instructions. And, and um, but I believe this is a, uh, we know if we hear things two or three times or if it's written two or three times, it's, it's very, very important for us to understand and, and give ear to because it does teach us how to it does teach us how to um, deal with people and and the proverbs is definitely all about how to deal with people any other comments and dogs too <laughs> Yep. Any comments? In Proverbs 4, verse 1, it says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we talk about the chasing of the Lord and how we, uh, God rebukes those who we love and how he, um, you know, how we should want to be. We don't want to continue to do things that are not right. And that's where this instructions and, and understanding comes. You know, the Lord gives us these things and he uh, wants us to know. Because it comes down to a lot of times that, you know, the things that we think, and I know it's true for me, a lot of stuff that I uh, have been corrected on was not the right way and not the right, yeah, not the right way. And, and you know, the word corrects us and teaches us and praise the Lord for that because we don't want to continue to do things that are not right because that's not walking in the ways of God. And we always want to be walking in God's way. Amen. 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 There is a saying, Father's, Father knows best. Right? <laughs> um, but our Heavenly Father truly knows what's best. Honestly, um, yeah. And also, I think we have, there, there's a verse that says we have our physical fathers here on earth to teach us but what more our heavenly father amen right? and um and also our physical father is here on earth you know they have more wisdom they have more experience and right and most of the time they don't want us to go through the same mistakes that they they went through amen so and then this applies to mothers as well mothers they they've been through things as well as well as fathers and you know, we, we learn about that when we're growing up and we're, you know, we listen to our parents and, you know, we listen to their wisdom and because they don't want us to make the same mistakes that they make. 
So they pass on this instructions and wisdom that that we uh, that they've been through, because they don't they don't want us to venture down the same paths and and you know like Pastor Nick was saying they know best because they've been through it and that's what it comes down to. Mothers and fathers know best because they've been through the things. And it says to teach your children the way that they should go and they won't depart from it. And those are great words to live by and to teach our children because we don't want them to, you know, we try to avoid them from making as many mistakes as they can. But we know that even falling and making mistakes, is, they're gonna, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other comments? Uh, well, yes, there was a saying that I heard uh, quite often from my from my mother when I was growing up. I'm not sure if I knew what it meant then, but I do now. And what she said is, "Charity begins at home." Mm -hmm. That that was that saying, and that just those words just stuck with me. And I wasn't sure, but but I mean, charity is love. And uh, it's one and the same with with with, with love, I, I believe. And uh, so, but that that was a that was a great message for me. Amen. And uh, and as I grew and and learned the, the true meaning of it, uh, then it became an even greater message. Uh, it it grew with me. I, I'll put it like that. So. Mm -hmm. Charity does begin at home and it spreads so far in our hearts because it's, it's what God gives us. Charity, love. Pastor yeah. Rubens and I know about discipline. We uh, we grew up in the South, okay? So oh, yeah. discipline is a big thing, you know, and it's it's you know, learning from our fathers and our mothers all the time. And and if we didn't do something right or didn't do, you know, being taught right and wrong was really instilled at early ages. And um, and if you did something wrong or did what you're supposed to do, there was definitely consequences for doing it. And um, and that's how we learn. Yes, absolutely. Sometimes painful consequences. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. A lot of time painful consequences. <laughs> Lots of times is right. But um, but it's like being in the military as well. You know, there are rules, right? Mm -hmm. And there are consequences for not following the rules and listening to those that are over you and and um, we have to know the rules and you know, breaking them, their consequences. Amen. Any other comments? Yeah, this is Steve. Could you go back one slide, please? Yeah, so thank you. Uh, obviously, our first verse here. Uh, it's interesting because it says a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. So there's a tendency to, uh, or there, there, there can be a resistance to that discipline that you're all talking about. And you've been touching on parts of Hebrews 12 that I'm going to read right now. Uh, and you have forgotten the... Oh, I'm go ahead. Sorry? It's funny because I was going to read it too, but go ahead. You have oh, it already. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I mean, if you've already got it, it's fine. But okay. Hebrews 12, starting verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Because there is a tendency when God corrects us to want to rebel. We can mm -hmm. despise God's discipline. We can be discouraged. And the enemy wants us to be discouraged and quit. Because we want to get it right. We don't get it right. God rebukes us and we can start getting very frustrated. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. 
If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. If we're not getting correction and rebuke by God, then we're illegitimate because no one's perfect. He's got to discipline us. He's got to change us. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And other comments? That's so true. No chastening seems to be mm. enjoyable at the moment. <laughs> we are being corrected. Um, well, there, there is a, I, I have a memory of uh, a situation between two people. I, I, I rode the school bus with as a young teenager and uh, they were twins and their names were Esau and Jacob. Their, their parents named them because, you know, they were Christian. He came, they came from a Christian family. And however, they uh, was raised by a stepfather. His name was Abbott. Mr. Ab we call him Mr. Abbott. And um, so he would, he would he would spank his children, his you know the boys, because they were they were <laughs> they were they were tough kids and they they got into lots of things. And one day, um, Esau was getting the the, the strap, and um, and Esau cried out, "Oh Lord!" And, and Jacob said to Esau. Esau, that ain't the Lord. That's Mr. Albert. <laughs> this other, this one, one kid would tell that joke on the school bus and everybody would be cracking up over it. That, that was just so funny. I'll never forget that. That's, boy, that was good old days to hear stuff like that. Because we all could relate to it because we all got physically spanked. Uh, with with a strap or something yeah, when we were going oh, up, yeah. Yeah. Pastor Tyron, you, of course you 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 can relate to that. You you're familiar with that. So, but that 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 was just so funny. Esau, that ain't the Lord. That's Mr. Albert. <laughs> uh, so, but. Uh, but that was the Lord in Mr. Abbott. I, I, I you know, I, I would think, and, and you know, not not that I'm agreeing with his methods. He could have done it a different way, but but he had the right idea. He he that you know Esau needed some discipline, and and everybody who who knew the two of them know that they both needed discipline because they got into lots of things. Those twins. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, without discipline, children will become spoiled. Yes. Yeah. That's right. We have Uncle Tyrone here who has the anointing with the children because they listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> they well, do. I tell them to yeah. do something. No. They <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anointing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor T has that voice that commands. He knows the, yeah. the children know his voice and they listen. <laughs> You're right, Pastor Knight. Amen. <laughs>
like Lena, Lena, <laughs> listens to Uncle Tyrone. Yeah, she was really good today, I have to say. That's good. Yeah. Okay, verse two. A man shall eat well by the fruits of his mouth, but the souls of the unfaithful feeds on violence. Amen. Comments. You know, well, if we look at this in spiritual terms, feeding on the fruits is the word, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if we feed on the fruits, you know, then good things come. You know, what does the Bible say? A bad tree cannot yield bad fruit, and a good tree cannot a good tree cannot yield bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot yield good fruits. You know, right. it's the words. It's the words that they use. The words from their mouth. You know, but we know the wicked and the unfaithful feed on darkness all the time. Yeah, it's a sad thing, but that's why we have to pray for them and, and ask God to show them. Because we do not want them to perish. Amen. Any comments? Not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of his mouth. Yeah. That's right. He said the tongue is a little member with deadly poison. Deal with deadly poison. I think that's a good verse to read, actually. Um, I think it's in James. I think so, yes. Um, let me see. All right, so it's in James chapter three, verse five. Oops. And this is, this is good. So it says, um, for we all stumble in many things. And then in verse three, it says, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Yeah, so, but no man can tame. So it says, for every kind of beast and bird, a reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. <laughs> it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Amen. 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 Well, you know, considering what you just read, um, Pastor Knight, um, mm -hmm. this verse here, it says, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. It seems like that this is a man who, who, who thinks before he speaks and uh, uh, and also, it, it's almost like there's something not said here, because the other one, that the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence, 
So the man who's eating well by the fruit of his mouth is one who has faith. And he will eat well um, because a man who has faith, God will cause him to, to, to speak and bear the fruit of the spirit. It's, it's almost like there's some blanks that in my mind I needed to fill out now. Like, what? A man to eat, by, eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Um, but the opposite of that man is the soul of the unfaithful. So this is telling us the man is a man of faith. Yes. Who yes. Eat well. So I'm kind of, you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Sister Joanna. Yeah. Yes, and it's all about the heart because what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. Yes. And 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 searches the the soul, what comes from the soul of the unfaithful is as well. It's this unfaithfulness, this ungodliness uh is uh comes from of course the heart as well. Uh, the soul, the heart is that is, you know, they're all connected. They all uh, represent the same thing in us. The, the the depth of our beingness is there. Uh, that's who we are, and 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 who we will be because we we practice that uh, that w which is within us. And so, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a deep verse here. It, it goes, to, amen. Amen. In Hosea 10, verse 13, you have flowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way in the multitude of your mighty men. Mm -hmm. It's like Sister Joanna was talking about faith and having the faith in the unfaithful. They trust in their own way. Mm -hmm. okay. Amen. And if we go back to verse four, they don't want to listen to anything. You can't rebuke them. You can't chasten them. You can't talk to them because they believe their own way is right. And they feed on those, their own things. Amen. And they, it spreads. It says they plow the wickedness. They spread it. Yes. Yes, that's uh, plowing, like in the fields. Mm -hmm. That that's how we cultivate the crops to make them grow better. To uh, and and uh, we we break up the land, the, the crust of the land around the crops, and so that the water, the moisture can get in, and uh, it just really. Uh, uh, Cause them to, to to grow better and 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 uh, and and it reaps its of course it reaps its fruit, but if if it's wickedness that you're plowing, of course you're going to reap inequity. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. So those who trust in their own way, they don't heed to correction. That's right. Praise the Lord. They think that they know what's best. And we're wrong. Yes. Any other comments? Sorry, we, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Acknowledge him. In all your ways, and he will direct the paths. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This wonderful 
things that happen when we acknowledge the Lord, when we know him. Amen. Verse 3, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Amen. <laughs> Any comments? <laughs> well, there again, it's just, we need to, a long time ago, I heard this, this, these, this quote from somewhere, it says, meditate before action. Well, we could kind of apply that to this, meditate before you speak. Seek God before you speak, before you open your mouth. Because so often we open our mouths and speak without being led by the Spirit. So if we are guarding what comes out of our mouth and waiting, then um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. And waiting on the Spirit to... Oh, we lost you. Oh, oh no, we hear you now. You're back. We will um are we will be preserved, you know. Yes. Guard, guard the things that come out of our mouth because they can hurt. Things that we say to people can hurt, or we may not intend to hurt people if we're following our own motives and not the the motive of the holy spirit we can do damage yes amen. yes amen um i just um uh, if I, i'd like to share something that i read a long time ago when i was i think i believe i was eight years old because there was the year my sister honey who is with the lord now the year she graduated. One wrote this in a. Uh oh. You there, Sister Pastor Rufus? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. You were okay. cutting in and out a while ago. Okay. Yes. Uh, I I know why, and I I got the solution right here in my hand. I'm hooking up the I'm hooking up the auxiliary microphone here, and so. But there's a little problem with the cable. Um, I'm almost there. While you're connecting the cable, um, in Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2, it says, Do not be rash with your mouth. And let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For a dream comes through much activity. And a fool's voice is known by his many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Powerful. Yes. Is it connected now, yeah. Pastor Rufus? Well, it's. I'm still having some trouble with it. And mm. it's cutting in. Because it shows on my screen. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do want to sh share what uh, this... Um, something that I heard from my, something that I actually read in my sister's yearbook, a message someone left for her. And her name, her real name was Rose. We call her Honey. And it said, Dear Rose, to be heard, speak up. To be seen, stand up. To be appreciated, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's yeah. a good one <laughs> yeah. that, that is good and that was uh, i just 
I wasn't expecting the last part. Remember that because sometimes I just talk too much. <laughs> I think a lot of us do, me included. So. <laughs> Well, it's about what we say. What does the word say? You know, either the words we speak will edify a person or bring a person down. Yes. And I think we need to recognize that when we get ready to say something. Is this going to help the situation and bring the situation up? Or or is it going to be okay? Or is we going to, you know, hurt a person's feelings or cause a problem? And so, you know, that's the guard I think this is talking about. Guarding what we think we're going to say before we say it, and then we'll be okay. Really, Amen. You know, the Bible does tell us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. You know, slow to wrath and, you know, because we don't want to, you know, cause a problem or hurt anyone's feelings, you know. You know, we, we talk we, in the world, people say, well, I'm just giving them tough love. They need to hear this stuff, you know, that this is what's happening. And, and you know, and, and that never works out. All you do is just make the person feel bad and, and just, you know, bring them low. And there's no comfort in bringing a person low or, you know, bringing them down. It's just, you know, and there are ways to talk to people and get your point across without, being so direct that it hurts their feelings. You know, we just have to find the word. That's why I says be slow to speak because we can figure out a nice way to, to get our points across without, you know, bringing a person down or hurting their feelings. And so that's, you know, it's, it's, but we are flesh. I mean, I know sometimes when we get into situations and I've been there myself that it happens and something happens and you just unload and you don't you don't have that time to be slow or it's, it's you just fire in all cylinders and shoot from the hip, you know, and mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not good. But, you know, we can't help it. But um but this word is really telling us about, you know, just being aware of it, that we should be slow to speak and slow to rap and 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 not want to bring a person down because, you know, that's not God's way. It's not God's way. Amen. 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 Any other comments? In Proverbs 21, verse 23, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Amen. Amen. So Amen. <laughs> That's what they were trying to tell my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Did she talk a lot? <laughs> no. No, that, no honey, honey was, was you know, very me person mm -hmm. but that was just someone rallying her trying to rattle her cage so to speak <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah works of darkness on pastor rufus uh something like that yeah. yeah and i think i think maybe they said that because she was mild-mannered actually and that was they were I don't know, just trying to wake her up or something or, or cause her to do something different yeah. <laughs> or or to speak more, speak up more than she did. But she was, she was really a mild, mild mannered person. You know, sometimes in the world, you know, we meet people. I've had it said when I was a flight attendant all those years, Especially um, the last, um, well, <laughs> the last 20 years of it when I was really in more of a leadership role on the airplanes is that flight attendants would say, you're just too nice. 
Yeah. Say, oh, really? Well, I'm sorry, but you know, I I just um sometimes the world doesn't like people who are nice, who are want to be kind and want to listen and be patient and all of that. And the world will ridicule that. And it sounds like that's what they were trying to do to honey. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the darkness does not like the light. No, it doesn't. Makes them feel guilty, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And you, but it really makes them want you to be like them and not be like, for them to be like you. That's yes. what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what it is. You know, because I've I've been through the same thing where people say, you know, you just this one guy told me, you just too nice. You just, you know, you're nice. Why why are you like that? You know, you should be mean and be, act like you're sad and you know, have troubles and be depressed like all the rest of us, you know? <laughs> I'm like, well, where's no, that's no fun in that. But, but they don't, they do not like to like. It's a sad thing. Praise the Lord, we have Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Any other comments? Verse four, the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of a diligent shall be made rich. Amen. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, this reminds me, I think I've maybe mentioned it before, but if we look at the fourth commandment, where it says um, to honor the Sabbath day in, in all, um, how's it go? Um, six days shall it's you work. Yeah. and on the seventh day you rest. So that's really a call for people to work for six days <laughs> and, not, <laughs> and to rest on the seventh day. And so this reminds me of that, the soul of a lazy man desires, but he has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. And I think this is a spiritual thing, you know, the soul of the diligent, it's spiritually rich. I mean, I, I, Think, you know, sometimes it amazes me how I can feel good while I'm working. I'm feeling productive and I'm it 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 it's it sort of feeds my soul a bit, you know. And 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 then this verse just tells me the Lord wants people to work and then rest. Amen. But if you're always lazing about then you can't tell the difference between work and rest mm -hmm. so um your 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 soul doesn't know the difference so i i've always kind of tried to look at it that way and i think you know as we especially if we're teaching young people um and trying to model this to to young people like the, uh, there's so many young people first time jobs at where I work I try to model that type of work ethic that you you know you give it the best of yourself but of course scripture says to do it all unto God and Amen. if you're doing it all unto God you are giving the very best of yourself to whatever task it is whether it's scrubbing a floor or cleaning a toilet um, whatever it is, you know, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer, or, you know, whatever it is, if you're doing it unto the Lord, that is something that brings it up to a whole nother level. It's a good work, right? Yes. It's goodness, righteousness. Yes. Love. Do it out of love. Mm-hmm. In love. Think about this verse. I think about, I mean, I've known people who 
I always was going to get a job, you know, I always going to go to work, mm-hmm. I always have these type plans. And I never, you know, I, I'll do it tomorrow, you know, and, <laughs> you know, that that's a classic line. I'll, I'll go to work tomorrow. I'll go, you know, and tomorrow never comes. Okay. You know, and, yeah. And in the end, they have nothing because, you know, they, they, you know, thought about doing these things, but they never acted upon it. They never, mm-hmm. you know, they never had the desire to go to work. They, you know, especially people who get away and, and get by on being lazy. And and we, we can see that all over. Uh, people, they, they do. They make being lazy a full-time job, you know, instead of just getting a job. But um, they work hard at doing nothing. I, I know people <laughs> growing up. I, I have to. I've seen them. They they <laughs> able to survive on not working. And you know, like Sister Joanna said, we should work six days a week. And you know, and, and unfortunately, we don't live like they did in those days, where you know, if you didn't work, you didn't eat, and that's just how it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, people have found a way to be lazy and be able to not work and eat and get the things they want to get. And, you know, so they're not only, you know, dead spiritually, you know, because it is a spiritual thing, too, as you said, Sister Joanna, because, you know, they're not looking to the Lord to to help them. But when I... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I think about those 45 years, I, as I look back, I do not know how I got through it. Yeah. But I know how I got through it because each day, especially from 1986 onward, that's when I really and truly met Jesus Christ. And it Amen. was through him. It was talking to him. Each day, during the day, minute by minute sometimes, that he got me through each calendar day and every year and then another year and another year. It was only through God that I was able to do that. And now I want to say something here. There are people who have worked hard their entire lives that deserve to retire you know, I, I so I don't want us to confuse this with the person who has already done all the labor and 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 and, and is in a different place in their life. So um do you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, in, yeah, I think that's a different, yeah, that's a different thing altogether. Yeah. This is different than that. I think. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. But I agree with you, Sister Joan. I mean, there are, I mean, I worked 42 years and I don't know how I did it other than the fact that it was God that did. Mm-hmm. And I know that even back then. I mean, you know, I didn't have a church most of the time and I would go here and there, but I knew God because, you know, I grew up in church since I was born. So I definitely knew who God was. And I definitely knew that, you know, if I pray, God would hear my prayers. And if I mm-hmm. talked to God, God would hear me talking to him. So mm-hmm. I clung on to those things even till this day. Amen. And, so, and he got me through all of that stuff, you know. Amen. And 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 he'll get those that are just starting out now the same way. Because, you know, you can't you can't work that kind of time without having God. For sure. Absolutely. That's for sure. Now, any other comments? Um, just uh, that this definitely also applies to pursuing the knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. Um, when we are lazy and we're not, which our flesh tends to be, doesn't want the things of God and to get to know him. So it, uh, we don't we don't grow and we don't flourish. But the soul of the diligent, the ones who pursue God, who ask God to help them and reveal Himself to them and put God first, is they're made rich in the spirit. 
Amen. 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 What also comes to mind is the soul of a lazy man desires, they may desire peace or just having a peace of mind and has nothing because they're not seeking the Lord. That's right. But the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Um, those who keep their minds on the Lord shall have perfect peace. Amen. 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 And it's his peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. John 6, 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. His stamp of approval, mm -hmm. that seal that is the uh, rulers back in the day of this writing, they, they, their seal was on their rings. They, they were wore rings and they would stamp. The uh, signet uh, ring. Right? Yes, the signet ring. They, they would stamp it in a ball of, they put a ball of wax on a, say a container of food or something, whatever was inside and, and, uh, and they would stamp it with that ring, and and the person who who received it would know that it has the the, the seal of the king, and or the, whoever the ruler was, and so, but Christ, of course, the Father has set his seal, and and, and that's the uh, analogy he's making. He's putting this alongside the the uh, works of the world, which what scripture does, it puts God alongside what we do in the world. And that's how we learn because we can associate, make that association. And so that is uh, the message from the seal. Uh, the son of man whom the father has set his seal. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is lonesome and comes to shame. Mm. Mm. Amen. Any comments? Well, a man who's righteous is convicted. His conscience mm -hmm. is activated and he knows that lying is wrong. And mm -hmm. so this is a righteous man who is righteous because he is following the Lord. It's not his righteousness that makes him hate lying. It's because he knows God and God convicts him that lying is wrong. And he feels good, whereas the wicked man is loathsome, and he he comes, he feels shame. He comes mm -hmm. to shame, and and that shame is within him because he knows, you know, the heart knows. Heart knows what you're putting in the mouth, in your mouth, or or what's coming out of your mouth. I should say, in this case, Amen. He has no problem with it, lying at all. Right. Right, that's a good point. Thank you for mentioning, Sister Joanna, about the con conscience. Yeah, conscience. It's like, you know, in those animated shows, you have the angel on one side of your <laughs> shoulder and then on the other side of your shoulder. And <laughs> yep. <laughs> And I think in some fairy tales, it was a cricket, Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, yes. Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> let your conscience be your guide. Yeah. <laughs> hmm.
that just proves really that so much, I mean, that God can use anything. He can use an animated secular film by Disney to um, get a point across. Mm -hmm. He can use anything. And so praise the Lord. God is so able to work outside of the normal parameters that we all operate in because he is the God who is outside of all time and space. He, he can utilize and teach through whatever means. Um, so hmm. I, I don't know. I just, it's amazing because, you know, those fairy tales, some of them teach lessons about good and evil. Mm -hmm. And maybe people aren't willing to listen to uh, them in another format, but on some level they get it good and evil. But of course, as disciples of Christ, our role is to point them to Christ. You know. Yes, but but also the roles of those who create these films and 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 these emblems, these pictures, they're gods too. God has them, and God causes them to to do that to to uh, uh, construct these um, pictures mm -hmm. that teaches us and because they belong to him and it's, it's him. He's still doing the work mm -hmm. in all of us and he, he does it in many ways. You know, you make a good point, Sister Joanna, about films and stuff because in our day, Films were in, the, in cartoons. They just weren't cartoons. They were very good educational tools. Mm -hmm. I mean, we learned a lot from from them. I know I did growing up. You know, especially the one with Pastor Nike was talking about, where the incident where the kid was about to lie, and then the devil shows up on one side and the angel shows up on the other side. <laughs> you know, those were good. Yeah. to learn about lying and not lying you know they did you not got the little true. devil on the sun side saying go ahead lie it's okay they're not gonna find out you know mm -hmm. <laughs> then you got the angel on the other side said no a righteous man hates lying you know and, and yes. don't do it you know and and you know and, and it's you know it's how we go through things too you know it's like yes. we have this battle you know and you know in the in the cartoon of course sometimes the uh, the boys would listen to the devil and suffer the consequences of what was going to happen by lying you know, or whatever they were doing. And then the angel would come back and tell them, this is why, this is what happens, you know? And, and you know, it was a really good educational thing that we were learning, you know? And it's a lot of spiritual, like you said, a lot of spiritual access to that because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see those in, in, in animated films today, not, not. I can't say if I've seen any, any, but, you know, it's all about, you know, the world lying and, and wickedness and plotting and scheming and getting revenge. And, you know, you know, there's no, no moral values in any of that now. It's kind of sad, but. Um, well, there is a great controversy going on between our Lord and Satan. Yes. And um, it plays itself out in many different ways. And uh, I I just, um, it, it, it's just amazing. It's an ongoing battle between good and evil that we see going on daily, whether it's as we look at the news, as we look at the types of entertainment people are viewing, uh, just everything, you know, it's it's a controversy, a battle between good and evil, and Christ represents the good, and Satan represents the evil. Amen. 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 You know, today I have to tell you this. 
there was a lady that came through my register line and she had this t-shirt on that said, not today, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. But it was, it was like looking at the whole thing kind of it kind of felt negative to me even though i knew it was a positive message not today satan you don't you don't get a hold of me get thee behind me I satan. Need, yeah. but why not say this battle is the battle of god he's yeah. god will fight my battle i would rather right. give god put god's name on a t-shirt mm -hmm. than satan right too yeah. much acknowledgement. For yeah, Satan, right? it gives yeah. Satan too much credit. Yeah, because yeah. as powerful as he may be, our Lord and our Savior is more powerful than evil than Satan. Mm -hmm. He is more powerful, no matter how anybody wants to look at it. I will, I will say that God is more powerful than the devil. Amen. Yeah. I come in agreement with that completely. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Oh. This should have had something on the back of that shirt, like, <laughs> like Satan hanging in a tree or something like that. <laughs> 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 that, yeah. that that would teach the lesson fully. Yeah. Yes. You have a picture of Satan being being just kicked out by the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Amen. Amen. In Colossians 3 verses 9 to 10. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Amen. 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 You know, we understand these things now and we know that these are not things of God who created us. Amen. And, um, you know, the old things are the old things, and we are we are a new creation, and we uh, we just want what God wants. We just want Him to just teach us and do the things according to His will, and, um, tending to give us the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that that we need to do to follow Him. And to teach others because, you know, we don't want to just keep this to ourselves. This is always to be shared with others to help bring others to Christ. Amen. 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 Any other comments? One more. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless. But wickedness overthrows a sinner. Amen. Amen. How do we remain blameless? <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it on our own. Not at all. No. Not at all. We cannot be righteous on our own. Amen. Mm. He gives us our righteousness and he helps us to be blameless. Mm. Praise the Lord. We have to seek the narrow path. That helps. I mean, that'll that's the way. To Amen. Get in. Yes. Seek the narrow path. Narrow and difficult is the way that leads to life. <laughs> and wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction. <laughs> and only a few enter through that narrow gate. That's right. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. In Proverbs 11, verses 5 to 6, The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. Amen. 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 Comments. Like what was mentioned earlier, there's no one good, no, not one. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned, and and our righteousness is in Jesus. Amen. Amen. He is the only way, the Amen. truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. He was tempted in all points as we are, but never sinned. Never. Mm -hmm. Never sinned. Yep. He was blameless and righteous. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Any other comments? And to go along with that, all we have to do now is keep our faith in him. And he, he does the rest for us. So our righteousness comes by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Okay. So we, I guess we will stop here as the hour. We're at the top of the hour, bottom of the hour. And uh, this is a good place to stop. So we will continue with Proverbs 13 next week. But before we go, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the study and this wonderful time in your word. We just thank you for blessing us with your presence. We know, Lord, where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst of us, guiding us and directing us. And we just cannot just give you enough glory for all the wonderful things you've done tonight. And all the word that was given tonight and just helping us tonight. So we just pray and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for each and every person to get a good night's sleep tonight, that you just bless us and be with us and pray us for the Sabbath message tomorrow and for the Sabbath day tomorrow. And so we just give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. God bless everyone. Before we go, 